what have you learned in um, digital retailing that we need to change for the coming year? So can someone answer that question of what have we learned that we should be applying to digital retailing processes um, specific to automotive, uh, I would assume. Um, to me, what did I learn is that it's a, it requires ongoing optimization and analysis. Like, again, it's, it's not an out of the box tool. I don't think it's meant to function that way. I think it requires constant analysis of how well is this working for my customers and and again like looking for that friction because that friction is going to tell you where do I need to either optimize the process or where do I need to add in a human element to kind of pull the customer through a little more easily. Um, so I would say like you know if you've you've had a digital retailing tool now I mean most have had it since 2020 which is awesome and there's probably a lot of data that you have it's it's time to analyze that data, it's time to walk through that process yourself um, and really have an understanding of, of what is that experience like, but also how are we proactively educating the customer for your specific dealership, what should they expect when engaging with a digital retailing tool? You know, I, I don't think it's safe to say, like, buy your car online. I, I don't think that's truly, you know, what that process looks like in most right. instances. There's, you know, a, a shared um, responsibility of like that digital online buying experience plus when the customer comes in the store, um, you know, so how are you talking about that digital retailing experience to customers? Um, and then again, how are you optimizing to better align with how they're currently engaging with your platform? Mm -hmm.